welcome back to conference hall. Uh, my name is uh, Matti Lukas and um, I'm a uh, professor of uh, Estonian Entrepreneurship University and I have the honor to, to share the second part of, of our modest conference. Um, before starting, uh, I, I do have to, to, uh, to give uh, apologies uh, from uh, Andres Harak, who is, uh, who is uh, ill and can't can, can be with us uh, in this conference. But I, I would like to, to, to comment the first part of, of uh, our conference. Uh, it, it was really very, very interesting. And, and, and um, uh, I, I had many questions uh, um, in my mind. Uh, first of all, uh, uh, the, the entrepreneurship mind. Can, can we teach in a university of uh, of un entrepreneurship university uh, to be a, an entrepreneur or, or entrepreneurship or entrepreneurial mind is, is just a state of mind and, and, and if it's state of mind what we can teach uh, uh, in, in, in university in this case. And uh, the second comment is uh, uh, to Philip, I already, uh, already said to Philip that uh, uh, he uh, made me happy because uh, well <laughs> I'm <laughs> I'm preparing uh, uh, with uh, Arcadia University of Applied Sciences with uh, Henrik Wolf a new, new uh, M M M MIT program, um, MBA program, MBA program, and we uh, there was a big discussion how to build up this program and what will be the structure of this program, and we decided to to uh, to have the, let, let's say the fundamentals, the first year fundamentals uh, uh, modules. Uh, uh, for management and for, for economics uh, and, uh, and have a, uh, let's say, global experience model between first and second year and, and keep the second year open. So the student can choose what, whatever they want. The question is how we can finance it. So, but um, uh, if we don't have Andres Harak, we, we will uh, start um, uh, with um, uh, Mr. Kalle Ahi, uh, people who recently have uh, want, uh, who recently wanted to borrow money in, 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 uh, in banks have noticed that uh, the price of money has been uh, uh, become very cheap. Mm, at the same time, it is uh, difficult to find a suitable loan guarantee or debt. Mr. Kalle Ahi will explain what developments have taken place in Central and, and Eastern European loan market. So the next presentation evaluation of the level uh, of competition in Central and Eastern European loan market. Please welcome Kalahi, lecturer on entrepreneurship share. Uh, first, I would like to introduce myself. My name is uh, Kalahi. I'm a docent here and um, I'm a docent of uh, finance and uh, banking, and this is also probably the reason why I'm talking about uh, uh, a topic which is different from uh, other presenters, um, and uh, this is uh, related to evaluation of the level of competition in Central and Eastern European loan markets. Um, first, a uh, few words about the background of the topic. Um, I would say that uh, banks uh, um, play, uh, play a really dominant role in, in the financial sector, and this is especially true for uh, Central uh, and Eastern European countries. Uh, they channel a majority of resources to different sectors. Uh, I would argue that they are really detrimental to growth, economic growth, in these countries, and uh, this is also the reason why I am so interested in uh, how efficiently the banks operate, um, what are the determinants uh, of the market structure, and so on. And it's, of course, also a uh, um, major uh, concern to um, contemporary research, um, how to consistently evaluate the level of competition. Uh, I would also like to add that uh, theoretically, actually, it is not really clear um, if uh, uh, the aim should be 
perfect competition or as much competition as you can, can have. Um, some theories argue that uh, there could be a trade-off between efficiency and um, stability uh, in uh, these markets. Um, but uh, I'm concerned with empirical estimation. Uh, the full paper, I think, will be available in the conference uh, website, so those who are interested in the topic could uh, have a look at it as well. Uh, I would also say that it's rather uh, technical, um, so, but I try to, to keep uh, technical details minimal, uh, at least here in the presentation. So my aim uh, is to evaluate the level of competition and uh, try to capture the dynamics of banking competition and my sample is uh, 19 Central and Eastern European countries. Um, uh, the methodolo methodology I apply here is uh, rather novel. It has not been applied to Central and Eastern European markets before, and uh, this is rarely uh, applied to other advanced markets also. There are only a few papers who have uh, tried to, to use it uh, so far. Uh, my sample is... Uh, uh, captures the time span from 2003 to 2010. Uh, and I would like to also note that this is uh, the first presentation of this paper. And um, in some sense, uh, uh, the results are still preliminary. Still some work is needed to do uh, with um, uh, robustness of the results and, and uh, further analysis of the sources of competition is still on the way. Uh, first, uh, I would discuss uh, about the data. The data I use is from Bankscope database. This is a very comprehensive uh, database. Uh, I use financial um, statements information uh, from uh, 19 countries. Uh, altogether I have uh, 480 banks and I'm uh, mostly using unconsolidated uh, financial statements. Uh, so it means there is a lot of data. Uh, I work with uh, also I uh, spent quite a lot of time to, to uh, to filter the errors uh, uh, and to um, add missing data by just searching uh, banks' web pages and uh, finding data from there. Um, so I did some interpolation, uh, but uh, it uh, captures only less than 1% of the data. And why I chose this uh, time period, uh, Bankscope has very bad uh, data coverage before uh, 2003. Okay, some words about my methodology. Uh, the problem with uh, competition is that uh, we cannot really directly observe the uh, uh, level of competition. Uh, there are some, of course, uh, some traditional measures, most of you probably know, uh, stemming from the uh, conduct structure performance uh, uh, hypothesis, uh, uh, which uses concentration indexes, uh, herfindahl hirschman index, uh, uh, to evaluate the level of competition. But, uh, in the paper, I show that this is uh, both not uh, uh, theoretically, neither empirically uh, robust uh, estimation technique. Uh, so uh, my basic model follows uh, the uh, new empirical industrial organization approach. Um, the roots uh, of uh, this approach are in microeconomic theory. So first we have a model. From a model we have uh, theoretic, uh, testable implications, uh, uh, testable relationships. And uh, one of the example of uh, this approach uh, is what I'm uh, using here. Uh, this is called a Boone indicator. Um, so estimation, estimation technique, as you can see from here, is, is really very, very simple in the sense as, uh, that uh, only a few variables are involved in the, uh, uh, in the uh, uh, formula here. Uh, we basically relate uh, bank profitability or uh, market share. I use uh, bank profits uh, from country, uh, mm, from uh, different countries uh, for every bank, uh, for every time period, and relate it to uh, marginal costs of banks. And al I also add um, uh, uh, several uh, control variables um, uh, to control uh, uh, for endogeneity and for other problems we might have uh, in the estimation. Uh, the formula here seems very easy, but uh, other, another problem is that we cannot actually uh, uh, 
see from the data what the marginal costs are. So have, we have to simulate that, uh, them. And uh, mm, the technique I used uh, uh, is uh, estimation of translog cost function. But be before going to that, uh, I would like to show you some kind of graphical interpretation of the indicator. Basically, the indicator, the idea is that uh, um, uh, inefficiency is uh, punished in the markets. So it means that uh, 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 more efficient banks uh, over time uh, will have higher profitability and gain market share. Uh, those banks who uh, are less efficient are losing market share, uh, showing poor results, and also some of them are just driven out of the market. So we would expect uh, that uh, uh, the level of in, uh, competition can be captured with this uh, beta in the formula. Uh, the beta is expected to have a negative value. So there is a negative relationship between marginal costs and uh, profitability. And the uh, larger the value of this coefficient in absolute terms, the higher is the level of competition. So if you uh, see uh, in some of the uh, tables uh, large negative values, you would think of uh, higher competition uh, in those countries. Uh, I didn't add the uh, specification of translog cost function, but I would say that this is uh, one quite, let's say, um, traditional way to model uh, banking uh, costs. Uh, this is very flexible, has uh, a lot of uh, variables in it, uh, also in interaction terms. So a lot of different banks can be approximated with this um, uh, cost function. Um, this uh, cost function actually needs to um, specify uh, the uh, outputs of the bank and also the inputs the banks use and the input prices are included here. Um, I'm interested first in estimating the total cost of the banks, but later on I will turn to loans. So I will get the uh, estimation of uh, total costs. From there I'm uh, uh, finding the uh, marginal costs with respect to loans. And uh, if I have uh, this uh, marginal cost formula, I can simulate the uh, marginal cost for every bank for every time period. And these marginal costs then I can then uh, include in my regression analysis. Um, so empirical procedures are the following. Uh, for translog cost function, I used uh, fixed effect effects uh, ordinary least squares. Um, I used country grouping. I'm not really very happy about this. Uh, probably there are better ways uh, to estimate uh, um, total cost functions. But uh, for doing it uh, for every country separately, it proved uh, inefficient, uh, so I don't have much data for that. Um, uh, for uh, the specific uh, Boone indicator regression, I used uh, return on average assets. Uh, before impairment uh, losses uh, uh, and regressed it on the simulated marginal costs uh, and I added also controls. I, um, the analysis uh, I did uh, for country specific, I ran country specific regressions, group specific regressions and also looked at the total panel and also tried to capture the dynamics using also different regressions. I addressed potential endogeneity problems, which I found are in the sample with uh, GMM estimation technique. Okay, here are some <laughs> tables with the results. Uh, um, I'm not go. I will not go through all the uh, countries here, but uh, uh, the stars here indicate the so economic significance. Uh, if there's, there are no stars, so we, we cannot claim that. Uh, level of, uh, the parameter of beta is uh, different from zero. Um, uh, I would say that the, for most of the countries, uh, the sign of beta coefficient is ex as expected, but the interesting thing here is that uh, the higher level of competition for was found for countries uh, which are in a lower level of development for some peculiar reason. Um, I'm not really sure why it is so yet, and uh, the level of competition was lower for uh, more developed Central and Eastern, Eastern European countries. Uh, you, know, you, can, you can see that the high level of competition, Moldova, for instance, Macedonia, 
Romania, uh, those are the countries which ex ex kind of exhibit uh, the higher level of competition. Uh, Ukraine as well there. Uh, okay. <laughs> Another regression uh, among uh, multiple other, uh, what I had in my paper, uh, I tried also to capture the dynamics uh, uh, of um, the level of competition. Um, basically, uh, these are some of the results from, for some countries. Uh, the basic idea, what you can see from here, is that uh, also there are not so many stars, as you can see, is that uh, the level of competition has actually increased for several countries in the period starting from 2008, 2010, and also there is no large difference, there, is there are no significantly different changes from the uh, boon, initial boon indicator uh, over the period 2004 to 2007, so we, we can ki kind of claim that uh, uh, unexpectedly, there is no increase in the com level of competition over these years. Um, we, we still see that the countries have uh, gone through uh, rel relatively fast uh, growth, financial deepening, uh, fun um, uh, foreign banks entering into the markets, but we do not really see an um, increase in, in banking competition. So this is also an interesting result. And uh, I also uh, run a few more regressions with a full sample, and uh, the regression with full sample also confirm, confirmed my uh, mm, conjecture that uh, the level of competition has decreased over the last few years in Central and Eastern European banking markets. Okay, and uh, some of the concluding marks. Uh, as I said in the beginning, uh, uh, this is still a work in progress. Uh, the robustness of the results should be looked at very carefully yet. Uh, this is really the first study uh, which applies this novel approach to Central and Eastern European countries. Uh, uh, so I think there is a novelty in, in this research. Uh, uh, this research uh, uh, has uh, uh, this method I use is, has also very nice property that it's not really cons uh, um, constrained to the uh, some particular state or geographical area as other methods uh, from new empirical industrial organization research area and we also need relatively low data so this is a kind of nice tool to investigate the level of competition and what uh, concerns my results uh, so to re reiterate, I found uh, that uh, the most competitive markets uh, by using my uh, methodology here is Ukraine, Romania, Macedonia, Moldova, and Latvia, interestingly, uh, countries exposed to less banking competition are Montenegro, Slovenia, Poland. In general, we see that uh, um, less advanced countries tend to have a higher level of competition, more advanced countries, with exceptions, of course, tend to have a lower level of competition. Uh, there is no significant increase in the level of competition over the period 2003, 2010, and, and also I see uh, significant in my research decrease since 2008. So what could be the reason for that? Uh, one could relate it to the um, uh, strategies of parent banks in those countries, uh, I mean parent banks, uh, foreign banks, that are changing uh, strategies in those markets. Maybe uh, the days of skimming the cre cream in those markets are over. And uh, um, so this could be one of the reasons why we, we see this uh, relatively dramatic change, actually. Yeah, thank you. Thank you for attention. If there are some time for questions, I am ready to uh, stand ready to answer the questions. Otherwise, uh, you could consult my paper. My uh, contact is uh, given also there, and and we can discuss it uh, after the conference as well. Thank you, Father, for mm -hmm. this interesting presentation. Actually, we are completely running out of time, but uh, one question, please. Thomas, please. Uh, this, uh, practical um, I think uh, policymakers uh, 
need a tool or, or set of tools in order to uh, evaluate level of competition. And um, I think uh, one um, practical use could be related to that. Thank you, Valet. Actually, <laughs> we are very proud of our um, uh, economic crisis management. But uh, if you compare our banking system, uh, how do we look like in, in, in this field? Well, I, if you think of the Estonian banking sector, then we do not really have Estonian banks here. Uh, most of the banks uh, are really foreign-owned, Scandinavian banks uh, owned, and uh, they uh, managed uh, the crisis very well. And so we didn't really have much problems. Uh, our, however, I cannot speak for many followers who have and had hard times, unfortunately. Okay, thank you, Valet. So, so, as you understood, our second part is uh, about money and, uh, and people. And um, uh, our next presentation, uh, work-related value in developing Estonia, is prepared by, by our rector, Professor Krista Tolik and, and head of entrepreneurship share, uh, Mrs. Mara Kurwitz. So how do Estonian business leaders' work-related value have been changed in uh, in last 10, 15 years? Please, Mara, the floor is yours. Good afternoon, dear guests and colleagues. Uh, my name is Mare Kurvitz, and uh, the topic of my presentation is work-related values in developing Estonia. The study was carried out uh, together with my colleague, Professor Krista Dulik, and with our students, and it was a part of the program uh, called GLOBE. About GLOBE program, I uh, will tell you about a few minutes. And my presentation is divided into three main sections. Firstly, I tell something about background and the purpose of the study. And secondly, few uh, words about methodology and sample. And thirdly and finally, I'll give uh, results and some numbers and conclusions. Now, so a few words about background. According to Afori, the concept of organizational values has no single and widely accepted definition. Values can be observed at different levels, for instance, individual, organizational, and group values. They can be differen differentiated uh, by the degree and place of exposed scope and other characteristics. Values are so deep-seated that one never actually sees values themselves. What are seen? are the ways through which values manifest themselves. For instance, opinions, attitudes, preferences, desires, fears, and so on. Values can be personal, prof professional, organizational, or societal. Values provide the foundation for purpose and goals of an, ent of an enterprise. The sil uh, they silently give directions to the hundreds of decisions made at all levels of the organization every day. So we can say that they are the heart of the organizational culture. And that is why uh, values are so important, and that makes values inter interesting for our search, research group. And the second point, the same research on work-related values was carried out in Estonia in 2001. At that time, the Estonian society was on the doorstep of the, uh, to the European Union. It was a big transformation period, as well as a period of rapid economic development for our country. Mostly, it was a quite optimistic period. But unfortunately, rapid growth was followed by economic recession in Europe and the entire world started in 2008. In 2012, when this research was conducted, the task of leaders and employees differed from the task 10 years ago. So we, do, uh, we decided that uh, it's time to take another look at the work-related values of Estonian leaders and their subordinates to determine whether they are still valid or have changed during the last 10 years. 
And this leads me to the purpose of this uh, research, which was to determine whether the work-related values uh, of Estonian leaders and then subordinates to uh, have changed during the 10 last years. And what kind of changes have taken place, if there are. And that's all what I wanted to uh, say for introduction, introduction of the study. And now about the methodology and samples. Uh, current research, research was carried out by implementing the global leadership and organizational, organizational behavior methodology and research tools. The GLOBE research program is worldwide, multi-phase and multi-method project. The concept of the research program focuses on leadership and organization practices. The program, this program was uh, conceived in uh, the summer of 1991 and Estonian, uh, Estonia joined the project in 2001. And one of the authors of the study, uh, Professor Krista Dulik, is the country co-investigator for Estonia. And in spring 2012, uh, a new data collection round was carried out with the help of the students of Estonian Entrepreneurship University of Applied Sciences. And uh, this time, the research tool that was used was the same questionnaire as in the GLOBE project in 2001. Uh, few further words about the GLOBE. The GLOBE leader attributes and uh, behavior questionnaire includes uh, 112 uh, leader at attributes and behavior items for studying leadership issues. And addition, uh, in addition uh, to leadership issues, uh, the research investigates work-related values. And uh, for the purpose of investigating, investigating work-related values, the respondents were asked to indicate how much importance should be assigned to each of the factors listed when making critical management decisions. And for that, a seven-point scale was used. The respective questions and response options you can find in our article in Appendix 1. Uh, and, um, but for example, there were work-related values as cost control, uh, customer satisfaction, effect on environment, uh, ethical considerations, and so on. Uh, the random sample uh, in the study uh, in 2012 consisted of uh, 33 enterprises, and uh, in more details, the uh, sample for managers was 33, and for subordinates, it was 145. And uh, this leads me uh, to the main part of the presentation, results and discussion. And firstly, about theoretical assumptions. The present research was based on theoretical assumptions that cultures change very slowly, but they can still be changed. We can find different uh, definitions of management by different authors. For instance, Wake said that management is the process of getting things done through other people. In order to manage, one has to know the things that must be done and the people who have to do them. Understanding people means understanding their backgrounds. And understanding their backgrounds helps to predict people present and, uh, present and future behavior. And based on uh, theoretical assumptions and statements by the gurus of organizational culture, management and leadership are the cornerstones for cooperation in whatever kind of action. Fernandez and Hogan uh, stated that one of the core issues in leadership and leader activities is the value system. And Hofstede states the national culture changes very slowly, if at all. Organizational culture may be uh, consciously changed, although it, is ne it, is necessarily, it isn't necessarily easy. And what did we measure? In 2012, the same uh, work-related values were measured as in 2001, both in managerial and subordinate sub subgroups. And for both groups, the average mean values were calculated on the basis of received data. 
And now some uh, numbers. And the first uh, slide uh, is about the deviation of the values into the groups. And uh, the, the results were divided into five groups as follows. The first group, these were values of no importance at all. And uh, mean value uh, was one. And the second group, uh, these were slightly important values. It is values of very little or limited importance. And mean value was two or three. And into the uh, third group belonged generally important values. Uh, this is a values that should be assigned a moderate amount of importance and should frequently be, uh, be considered important and mean value accordingly was four. And uh, the fourth group, very important values with mean value five and uh, the finally the fifth group, these were especially important work-related values. Values that should be assigned a very high amount of importance and should always be considered important or should be considered more, in, or more important uh, than all other considerations. And accordingly, mean value six or higher. Now, numbers. Uh, the first group, this means values of no importance. And uh, in this group, uh, there was a statement effect of supranational forces, which had the lowest mean value in both subgroups, subgroups during both uh, research years. And despite the increase in the evaluation, the statement effect of supranational forces remains a value of limited importance. Now, the second group, uh, values of very little importance, contained two statements during both research years. The statements are, pleasing, respecting, not offending a divine, being a god or an idol, and effect on minority employees. The mean value for the statement pleasing, respecting has changed in subordinates group, subgroup. And in order to realize whether the change in the mean uh, is significant, t-test was used for determining that. And, um, the increase in the subordinate sub subgroup can be considered significant. So it's marked with yellow. The mean value for the statement effect on minority employees and has increased in both subgroups. The importance of the increase was again tested with the help of t-test and can be considered significant in both subgroups. And both values in 2012 are very close to the evaluation of four, uh, which are really, uh, which are already generally important values that should be assigned a moderate amount of importance and could belong to the next group. Uh, this could be the result of political and economic development in Estonia. And the third group contained uh, the following. Uh, values. Effect on female employees, contribution to the economic welfare of the nation, welfare of the local commun community, and effect on the environment. The, value, the mean value of, of the statement effect on female employees in 2001 um, was 3.59 in the managerial, sub managerial subgroup and 3.86 in the subordinate subgroup. And in 2012, the mean values were respectively 4.26 and 4.20. And the increase of mean values was tested again by the uh, t-test, and the increase in the subordinate subgroup can be considered significant. And according to the t-test, the increase of mean value of the statement effect on the environment in the subordinate subgroup uh, can be considered also significant. Mm. And the increase in the, in the evaluation transfers the in the evaluation to the next group of values, which is the group of very important values that should be assigned a higher amount of importance. So it can be considered 
uh, important. And the fourth group, uh, this means very important values, and um, with a mean value around five, contains uh, the statements, ethical considerations, employee relations issues, effect on relationship with other organizations, cost control, effect on sales volume. And here, the mean value of the employee relation issues have gained more imp importance in both uh, group, subgroups. But the change in the subordinate subgroup is statistically important. And other changes in the mean values of this group are statistically unimportant. And the last group, fifth group, uh, you can see here, but there are no um, statistically uh, important uh, changes, so this group are statistically unimportant as well. Now, and as a result of the research, the following can be pointed out. The first, the majority of work-related values in Estonia business firms are in 2012 and in 2001 the same. There are some, some changes, and the changes are in some of the values considered to be very little or limited importance, such as the importance of minority and females employee, female employees. Uh, the importance of minor minorities uh, and their integration has been an important topic for years in Estonia. And people have become more tolerant. Enterprises and managers in charge of them have realized the importance of competent workforce that can also be found among the minority subgroups. And here the other issue is continuous attention on integration politics where the stress is on integration of local minority groups into local economic life. And the attitude towards minority groups, especially towards local Russians among the younger generation, has become more tolerant. And uh, the next one, the second value that has become more important is the effect on female employees. Is also, um, and uh, uh, it was in 2001 and in uh, 2012, a value that should be assigned a moderate amount of value. But the ten uh, tendency of gaining more importance is substantial. But it is sad that in Estonia, the work done by men is always more important, more recognized, and also, according to statistics, more uh, paid than the same work done by women. And. Uh, these, are, uh, these themes have been issues recognized by, me, by the media and also by the uh, different initiative groups. And um, we hope that it will be changed more in near future. And the statement effect on the environment has gained more importance as well. And uh, here we can say that uh, in Esto the Estonian Ministry of Environment uh, carried out the research in 2012 where they wanted to know um, or study awareness of uh, Estonian uh, environmental awareness, Estonian people. And the results were that 98% of the respondents agree that nature uh, preservation is beneficial and 77% tend to agree that if there is a choice between two options, preservation of the environment or development of economically profitable business, the preservation of nature cannot be sacri sacrificed. And this also supports the findings of the present research. And finally, our conclusion we say that according to this study, the values change slowly, but it is still taking place. And this brings me to the end of my presentation. Thank you very much for listening. And uh, now, uh, if there are any questions, I would be pleased to answer. Thank you. If there are any questions. 
No, but we have uh, opportunity to ask comments uh, from uh, Chris Adolik. So, what do you, how do you comment this, um, uh, this presentation or this uh, problem setting? So, as Mati already told me that I have to comment on this research, so I'm a little prepared. So, first of all, when I Run, when I proposed Mara to run that kind of research once again in 2012, we started speaking about it in 2011 and actually my assumptions were that the values haven't changed because it's only a period of 10 years. So I thought that uh, we, the liberation of Estonian Republic was uh, in the beginning of 90s, so the first wave of the research was carried out in the beginning of 2000. Uh, 2000, so it was 2001, so there was a rapid development of all this cowboy capitalism and so on. So in these 10 years, they actually don't affect the values. But as you saw from the research results, there were the soft issues which actually started changing slowly. And uh, Maria also presented, uh, pointed out what could be the reasons for the, for the development, but still the effect of minority employees, the female employees, and, and the environmental issues, they have become more important and maybe the also the 2008 and 2009 recession has its uh, effect on these ones, that the other issues, not only cost control and sales volume and so on, play the role in the, in the, in the life of the, let's say, business life. That's my comment. Uh, and uh, I must say I was happy when I got the results of the T-test, when I saw that there are differences in the values, because my assumption was that there were no changes. And when I found out that there's changes on these issues, the more happy I, I was, I must say. That's my comment. Thank you, Kristen. And thank you, Mark. I remember 20 years ago, we wanted to be a boring European or Nordic country, and we, we didn't realize how much does it cost to be boring European country. And that's also, also related to, to the next presentation. We, we know how the high standards established in Nordic countries, and uh, in fact, in whole Euro Europe for, for social inclusion of uh, disabled people. And um, uh, Professor Merle Talvik studied how Estonian society support disabled people access to study and work, and what are the challenges uh, uh, challenges we face too in the coming next year, please, Melodalek. Good afternoon. Uh, thank you, Mighty, for, for um, the introduction. <laughs> and um, uh, I have also co-author, who is um, another Mati, my, my husband. Uh, his background comes from psychology, and um, uh, we have done this um, research together. Uh, I come from the Chair of Creative Entrepreneurship, and I both um, work in, um, in uh, this university here. And um, our um, study, uh, we called our study, do vocational standards support access to study and work of disabled uh, persons. Um, and uh, the presentation and the article are about um, accessibility to education, uh, especially to entrepreneurship education. And uh, we studied if and how the descriptions laid out uh, in vocational standards meet the necessity of persons with uh, disabilities. So we go on with uh, minority groups and their necessities. I have to tell that this uh, study is really uh, done in one certain context. The things we found out uh, cannot, be, uh, cannot work in another uh, context, so this is the context of disabled persons. And uh, the background what led us uh, to the topic um, is um, that, first of all, um, in March this year, our parliament uh, ratified the Convention of the Rights of Persons with Disabilities, uh, what uh, has uh, really been passed uh, in the United Nations General Assembly already in 2006. So we have this um, 
ratified uh, in Estonia too. It has again brought into limelight noticing, caring and considering people with uh, educational special needs. Um, as you know, as, as you know, Estonia is a very uh, small country, a very small nation. We have uh, less than, than one and a half million uh, constant inhabitants here, and uh, 143,000 of them have uh, different kind of disabilities. This is a huge number. This is 11% of all the uh, population, and the number is increasing constantly. We didn't make difference there what kind of disabilities there are or what level of them, but we just took all of these people. So not all of us are rich and beautiful, and um, the topic is how the others cope in life and work. Uh, vocational standards are... Uh, the documents were requirements um, written for an, uh, certain jobs. And uh, here in Estonia, they contain abilities and personality traits. Uh, these are also mentioned in, uh, in the descriptions um, of, um, of uh, together with the job descriptions in the vocational standards. Uh, they are, the, the vocational standards are uh, quite widely used. And they are used uh, when compiling study curriculum in self-assessment and, and evaluation process, what we have in uh, education, in planning career and retraining, compiling job directives and employing workers and so on and so on. So they are quite important documents and, uh, and uh, are really in use. Um, we believe that uh, success in one or another activity is achieved uh, via different abilities um, and, uh, not, um, and if there is a lack of one ability, uh, one specific ability, it can be compensated by another ability or set of different abilities. Um, and the com competencies in vocational standards are described from the employer's perspective. The employers are actually not uh, very much interested um, uh, what goes on uh, in a uh, person's head or the internal abilities, uh, what the people have, but they are interested in the achievement itself. And um, it is not so important how the achievement is uh, uh, achieved, but the result is important. And how do you do it is not uh, of the first importance. And this means that the descriptions of uh, competences via personality traits and abilities as prerequisites uh, for a job um, are not uh, justified. And um, mm, they, are, they are always in the evolution. The abilities uh, can be developed and, uh, and it is uh, much um, connected to effort and will. So what do we did? Uh, we have uh, 717 vocational standards in Estonia for uh, 321 professions. So um, there are more standards than professions uh, because there are different levels for, for uh, the same profession. We analyzed them all and uh, found uh, the personality traits and abilities what were described in, um, in these standards. Uh, there are more than 400 wor words describing uh, personality traits or abilities, uh, which are um, said to be essential, essential for the job or profession. Uh, so you see here, these traits and abilities were mentioned more than uh, in uh, 100 standards. You see there are different uh, things, cooperativeness, accuracy, tension resistance, responsibility, adaptability, and so on and so on. They were mentioned more than 100 times. And these words were mentioned uh, between uh, 50 and, uh, and uh, 100 times. So these are also important. You say creativity, as we had a lot of talk about that in the first half of the day. Creativity was mentioned 61 times. Uh, I also put um, some examples to the presentation. Some of them are good examples, some of them are bad examples. And the first one comes. Uh, it is about um, a secretary. 
Um, it is said that cooperativeness is, uh, is important ability for a secretary. And you see the job description says um, mm, the uh, names a lot of things and uh, what the secretary has to be uh, has to be done and um, uh, as you see, all of them um, refer to documents and not to people. So our co question was why cooperativeness is uh, the most important quality uh, for such a job. Um, the other example about um, uh, secretary, again, um, they say that stability and stress resistance uh, are also important traits for a secretary. Uh, we have um, one uh, previous study that we carried on in 2009, um, absolutely another study, not uh, connected with these um, vocational standards, but still. Um, we studied a lot of secretaries. Uh, two, um, 229 uh, successful secretaries and among them there were 61 persons who were emotionally unstable but they were still very successful so they had uh, they had uh, uh, quite high uh, neurotism scale but they uh, did well as secretaries so again the question why stability is so important um, the vocational standards also um, contain a lot of words uh, referring to health. As you see, precision of movement, uh, physical resistance, speed, good vision, good hearing, good health, uh, clear diction, and so on. Um, it is also questionable why uh, uh, these things should be in uh, the standards, because... Um, um, we also studied the curricula and found out that uh, no one uh, uh, of these um, health-connected uh, qualities are taught uh, uh, in the higher education establishments. So um, the, there is no actually uh, possibility to, uh, to develop them in uh, the establishment and they are also not tested uh, at the admission process. Uh, we have also 10 standards, only 10 from uh, 700, uh, were the, uh, what do not contain uh, personality traits and abilities, so the, you see they are from a uh, very different uh, field. They just contain competences. Uh, another example, this is um, a description for uh, assistant waiter who, know, uh, who helps a uh, waiter in uh, his or her work. Uh, helps in serving process and in cleaning tasks and this is the description what he or she should be like and this is actually a word uh, what is uh, well done by uh, disabled uh, persons okay this description is quite okay but if you go further you see uh, that still this uh, standard uh, tells that there is um, uh, there are a lot of things needed uh, calm nature stress and physical resistance expressive skills clear addiction and tolerance and so on and uh, we think that uh, some of them are uh, not uh, practicable for, uh, for uh, the disabled people, is expressive skills and clear addiction and uh, physical resistance especially. And um, you see the first uh, sentence here says how it is in, uh, uh, said in convention um, um, in connection with the uh, entrepreneurship that we have to encourage disabled people to come uh, into entrepreneurship and uh, at the same time we see the um, vocational standard for forestry uh, enterpriser who has to have several skills again and um, we think that this list uh, discourages disabled people uh, to go to that work and uh, the other thing is the abundance of personality traits and abilities. For example, there is a uh, business administration specialist who um, has to have 20 personality traits and abilities, what are listed here. You see, uh, this is too much already for uh, disabled persons, and uh, this is even too much for uh, uh, healthy persons, uh, and we almost do not have a person who has all these 20 abilities and traits. Uh, and uh, so it uh, just uh, seems to be a declarative uh, document. 
Uh, of course, uh, I said there will be positive examples, uh, and this is one of them. Arborist, you know, he, he uh, is who climbs up the trees and cuts the branches and so on. And there is, of course, uh, justified that um, there is high tolerance, coordination, quick reaction, physical resistance. In some cases, they are really um, needed. And the conclusions. Uh, first of all, we think that most, in most cases, um, these traits and abilities are presented in the way that discourage disabled people to enter the world of studies and work. Um, uh, because human productivity and activity depend a lot, of, um, a lot on the individual's will, and you never know which thing is compensated by, um, by another thing. And um, we have a lot of uh, technologies and um, uh, things that can uh, change the work character and uh, that can make it much easier, the coping uh, uh, on a profession for um, uh, the disabled uh, persons. And we asked, is it uh, the indirect uh, discrimination? Uh, because um, the, some people are put into an equal situation with others. And uh, actually, we can't say that because um, this is um, the situation is that uh, we do not have uh, enough studies. We have only one study. It is made in 2003 about police work. Um, they studied how, uh, which uh, things they actually need in, in the work, which, uh, which abilities, and uh, there were two of them, uh, what a person needs in police work. And the first one was readiness for constant change and learning new skills, and the other was work, work discipline. Uh, no physical abilities uh, and uh, no creativity, no, no, not these things at all. So, but this is only one uh, study what we have, and uh, we can't say, uh, we can't make uh, big um, conclusions uh, after, after that. Um, and uh, finally, I want to say that people who, despite uh, their disabilities, are able to acquire competencies uh, laid out in the standard, they should be suitable for the profession because uh, the persons with physical uh, uh, disabilities, they actually are very highly motivated to work and study, and we have to give a chance for them. Thank you. Do you have any questions to, to Merla, please? No? Actually, I have one. Uh, just to ver verify uh, if I understood uh, well. Did you uh, made a study of ordinary people, secretaries, more than 200 secretaries, and, and you discovered that six, uh, more than 60 person uh, was um, unstable? Yes. Oh my God! <laughs> I, I I I had in my life uh, at least 20 secretaries. It means that <laughs> six of them were unstable. You know this, um, <laughs> these things in uh, in psychology they are not so. Um, um, so it seems uh, if you don't deal with that, this neuroticism scale we all have this uh, scale, we all have the the number there. And, uh, and uh, this does not mean that uh, they are absolutely uh, out unstable. Uh, unstable or out of order at the, at the working place. Okay. <laughs> so this is, this is just the personality inside you, but you can always uh, learn to hide that. This is the, the, the question of co uh, competencies. Okay, thank you, Mano. Thank you. <laughs> Please. No, persons, 61, yes. it, it means 30%. Yeah, about it, it that. Means, uh, yeah, yeah, 20, well, yeah, 20. It is less than half still. <laughs> Awful anyway. <laughs> 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 Thank you. Thank you, Vella. So uh, finally, we, uh, what are the value of organization? Final presentation. Uh, and what are the value of educational institution? And um, how the employees ev evaluate the organization. In my point of view, I, I would like to know how um, employers evaluate the organization. And the next presentation will, will be done by um, doctoral student Mrs. Enek and Ditoff and head of management chair Mrs. Karin Kuint.
Please, Scotty. And uh, my name is Karin Guimet. I am lecturer of uh, human research management here. And um, I'm going to present you our uh, uh, research about connection between organizational values and stakeholders satisfaction researches. And we made this research with uh, my colleague, Enna Kenditov. Um, the world is changed. Probably it's not the new information to none. There are plenty of different researches, which has said uh, that uh, the success of the organizations depends on its values. And the importance of the organizational values increases constantly. For example, Collins said that sticking to core values is the key issue in an organization's sustainability. Rocker, profit orientation as a value has been replaced with a new value of sustainability, and so else. Uh, while in the 90s, uh, the organizational culture and values were treated as resources that help stay in competition, uh, then today they argue that basing on values is for an organization the issue to, of survival. That's the reason why all the activity in organization should be based on organizational values. According to previous principles, we assumed uh, that the opinion of organizational stakeholders should also be important, especially in the context of organizational values. In EUAS, we are in rearranging our stakeholders' feedback system. It is quite common uh, to research stakeholder satisfaction, but rarely uh, it is connected to our assembled according to organizational core values. Also in EUAS, we made research into employees uh, and student satisfaction. But we haven't researched the connection of results to values as described in the UAS strategy. In our article, we are going to discuss uh, and analyze how we could conclude something about acceptance of core values according to results of employee and student satisfaction researches. We compared the questionnaires with the values, question by question, and wrote out which value this activity propositions might support. Next, we grouped uh, prepositions which were connected to the same value and found out the average estimators. The questionnaires were different, but they both measured the satisfaction from two aspects the importance of the issue for them and the satisfaction with the issue in EUAS. There were uh, 37 prepositions in employee job satisfaction questionnaire and 34 in student satisfaction research. Both of the research projects were organized in spring uh, 212. 64 of uh, 96 employees and 249 of 1,625 first and third year students answered to that questionnaire. In our analysis, um, we based on the EUAS values, bought out in organizational development plan. Although the names of the values are changed by now, the content is mostly the same. So we hope our res uh, results are still important. And values are also described and uh, by the content uh, should comprise. Uh, caring, it means warm, 
friendly and informal. Academical, it means uh, research-based, high quality, enforceable. Contemporary, international, innovational, dynamical, and regional, covering in Estonia. Compiling the value groups, mm, propositions uh, supporting the same organizational value, we found caring, academical, contemporary, equally important. Only regional didn't came out. Also, there were no significant difference between importance and reality in different value groups. Cut between estimation to importance and estimation to reality was the same in every value group. In 15 say, statement out of uh, 37, uh, no direct connection with the named values was found. The, Mm, statements in which the direct connection wasn't found are mainly from job management. It means uh, mission, vision, objective, external communication. And organization reputation. It means overall reputation, leaders' reputation, perspectivity, and so on. From the 22 statements that we directly connected to values, five were um, connected with contemporary value, 10 with uh, caring, and seven with academical. Uh, the results of employee satisfaction research uh, we analyzed from two aspects. Which were the most important satisfaction factors for the employees? Which value group those belong to and how to grade were the gaps between the factors importance and the real usage in EUAS. Analyzation of the gaps allows to generate connections between the unsatisfaction causing factor and organizational values. By knowing which value uh, is based on that factor, we can also affect the routing and developing on the values in the organization. For example, uh, the most important issue of our age estimation over uh, 3.7 uh, were equally divided between all three value groups. And um, when uh, reversing the comparison, uh, opening the values based on say statements, uh, satisfaction factors, we get new descriptions uh, of values. Uh, this makes possible uh, to control whether the new descriptions are in accordance with the value description in organization development plan. That way we say that value caring is described as socially responsible. Uh, uh, yes, noticing employees and achievements, offering support and appreciation, caring about employees, allowing free time for family, friends, hobbies, offering social events, employee-friendly, values, good work, uh, conditions. And for future research, uh, this allows possibilities to new hypotheses. For example, if the organization is socially responsible, it shows the employees that the organization is caring in, in its actions. Uh, when analyzing the student satisfaction research uh, results, we found that uh, 11 statement out of uh, 34, uh, the factors were not directly connected with any value. Three statements uh, were connected uh, with contemporary, 11 with caring, and nine with academical. As in employee results, no connection with regionality was found. Statements in which, which uh, no connection was found are more likely teed to national requirements. Volume of a study 
program, study programs, connection with profession, requirements for the assessment and infrastructure, study buildings, study halls, and so on. Most of these statements are tied to the quality of study, but this is not so well distinguished in values. When talking about um, a higher education institute, the a written rule and goal should be that all the study is quality study. Observing the most important statements of our age estimation um, over 4.4, uh, the students is, um, it is clear that uh, the most important um, values, value is caring. Uh, five out on Nine most important factors were from that group. Expectations and estimation for the importance of a factor in students' group were much higher than the employee group. But the estimation of reality is about the same level as in the employee group. When comparing the average importance estimation of a factor and reality, it shows that the main issues for the students are that the study program is based on employers, needs uh, services for the student are working, lecturers and staff are competent, and lecturers and staff are motivating and encouraging. If we compare the um, uh, differences between the employee group and students group, then the employees also considered statements connected by caring. Uh, but when employees found that uh, the caring value of a manager being quite good, difference between expectations and reality was quite small, the um, students found the stuff locking the caring value. As in employee study results, uh, we reversed uh, the statement analysis and described the values uh, based on the statements uh, connection, uh, connected to them. And uh, contemporary uh, offering modern, innovating, uh, versatile and international study, encouraging initiative and information sourcing, caring, taking suggestions into account, positive, emphatical, inspiring and motivating, simple and clear in communication, fair, appreciating students, allowing personality, giving feedback, and academical, based on employers' needs and practicality, offering necessary tools for study and work, permitting variable teaching methods and competent. And uh, we hope uh, that in our little study, uh, we could introduce uh, the importance of our organizational values. And I think that it's a very important uh, theme in our organization, because Krista and Mara also <laughs> did research. And um, it is essential that in all our actions, the values of our organization are clearly showing. And from our side, we do our best to support university in the best usage of its values. And I have great possibility to do it because I teach human resource management, and then I can uh, teach uh, uh, organizational management. And that kind of subjects. And thank you. Thank you, Karin. Do you have any questions, please? Please, come on. Just a question and a remark uh, from the German side. Uh, in Germany, we have the same phenomenon that uh, the rankings of universities. Uh, um, basing on the uh, 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 opinion of the students uh, are best when the uh, uh, universities are uh, perceived as caring universities. Caring is a very high value for the students. Mm -hmm. And then, of course, the second question is, will the university fulfill the demand uh, 
will they meet the demand of the employers? But my question is, are these the best criteria for an entrepreneurial university? When, uh, you mean uh, when we are caring? Yeah, yeah, because, is, it, uh, yeah. is it connected with the entrepreneurial? Yes, and uh, uh, providing the best uh, quality <laughs> of uh -huh. employees for uh -huh. the employer. Uh -huh. Is it the, the entrepreneurial university? Uh -huh. Uh, I think, uh, thank you for the question, and uh, I think that um, uh, caring is uh, such kind of uh, value that uh, may be a uh, value for uh, every uh, person and in each organization. Uh, because uh, to my mind, uh, caring, uh, 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 it's, it's uh, like a scaffolding and, and helps uh, uh, us uh, to, um, uh, to get our... Um, <laughs> aims. aims, yes. <laughs> I'm a bit nervous. No problem, no problem. Thank you. Thank you. Actually, this was my question too. Uh, I am being graduated in two universities. I don't remember that they are very caring for me. <laughs> perhaps, perhaps. I don't know, perhaps it's a question of private universities, but actually the most important for universities to give a, a, a very high level of quality education and caring is something uh, uh, supplementary. I think. <laughs>